Hey everyone, welcome to The Withering Effect, episode 77. Today's date is January 10th, 2021, and I did not yawn slash not sneeze in the middle of the outro for the pre-show, or duds versus none to the rest of the interwebs. That was a quiet sneeze and cough. Did not hear it. <laughs> well, it was a, did I say cough? I meant yawn. Yeah, you did say yawn. I just hear things different. By the way, my name is Jimbo. You may know me as Jimbo Slice 23. So what has your week been so far? What has your week been? Yeah, my week's been good. It's been a busy week. I've got a lot of little things done, starting with my episode that came out on Monday, or going to come out on Monday, depending on your time travel abilities. Uh, I built Honey Farm, both the comb and bottle farm. Very fun farms to build, especially when you yourself don't have to go get the bees and breed them. I was able to black market purchase them from Obni, so that was really nice. GG's Obni for helping me out. And the farm itself is super cool. So I've got the two farms facing each other, and whenever they activate and do their little cycles, all the drops go into one item elevator, which then runs across the length of the room, and it slings the items as hard and fast as packed ice will let it do at this honey wall so the items just like drip down this wall of honey nice and slow and it's like raining uh bee drops it's awesome and then it goes into an item sorter and gets put away nice and neat Ah, i love that room such a fun room to be in it looks so cool it's just you know there's bees in there but (laughs) yeah the way the way you have the items on display sliding down the wall is super sweet i suggest everyone to watch that episode because it's I, I haven't seen anything like it yet pretty cool yeah and i got the idea from reddit i can't take any credit for it. i saw somebody on reddit was doing it with like their iron farm drops and i was like mm. oh man that's great i'm getting ready to do a bee farm that would work perfect in a bee farm ggs to have posted that it, it like three or four people started posting that when i saw one of them reddit's a great mm. place to find weird little bits of inspiration oh yeah I suggest people going there and everything. I don't go on there as much as I should. But every time I seem to go on there, I'm lost Yeah. at looking at all these different inventive ways to, to build. Other than the honey farm, I worked on a face avatar logo. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do the last couple of weeks, where a lot of people will take their Minecraft character and just chop out the face and use that kind of as a logo or an avatar and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's cool and stuff, but there's nothing special about it. So my plan was I took all the layers of the face logo. So like the hair, the beard, the eyes, the skin, and made them into their own little layer and added a drop effect. So it's a 3D looking face avatar without being 3D. And I thought that was really cool. Mm. Have I seen this yet? It's on the Discord. It's it's really subtle. Your logo for the Discord. Yeah, I'm still playing with it. Okay, yeah, it is pretty subtle. Yeah, up close you can really see it. Yeah, it's hard to tell. So, like, I have two different ones. I've got one called Soft 3D and one that's called Harsh 3D. So whenever it does uh, the really small avatar icon like Discord, I use the Harsh 3D because it accentuates the layers more. Okay. But when I'm doing like a banner or something like that, I use the soft one because the the dark lines or the drop shadow is not as hard because it's a bigger image. You don't need it to be to understand what's going on. Yeah, I see. I can definitely see it now. I'm getting the image as big as I can get it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, man, it's fun to work with. I always like trying to do some kind of graphic design that differentiates myself. Yeah. Not very good at it, but it's fun to try. Definitely. Um, I've got one other thing, but I would rather wait and let you tell me how your week's been before we jump on it. Okay, yeah. actually did uh, a lot of stuff around the base. You did? Yeah, I got to finish the bowl. All the blackstone is down. I even did, like, the rim of the bowl. This is in my episode today, Sunday. It was out yesterday, Saturday. You'll be listening this Wednesday, so it'll be out there on YouTube if you want to see it. I also got started... On the interiors of the towers, I have done pretty much nothing mm-hmm. inside there. So while I was uh, 
I don't know, waiting around trying to figure out stuff to do. I kind of was just jumping back and forth and I didn't really record anything. And I just started, once you hit that flow and you want to see how things look, sometimes you just finish it. And I went ahead yeah. and I, would, I just finished the room and uh, I have a cool effect on the ceiling with cauldrons, the cauldron ceiling look. It looks really cool. I love cauldron ceilings. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Me too. That was a great opportunity to use it there. I don't know. I, there's a little bit more I want to do. Yeah, so far, that's about it. I do want to start on my storage area. I have boxes everywhere. Some boxes I don't know what's in. <laughs> you really do need a storage room. Yeah, so I'm, I'm probably going to start on that next episode, most likely. But there's still some interior work I need to put in place just to know where these boxes are going to go. Got to get that done first. Are you going to do an auto sorting system kind of like I have, or is it going to be a manual one? Uh, I'm going to make it automated if I can. I want to make it automated. Problem is, I have this stupid thing I'm doing this year, totally stupid, to where I have to do the redstone. So. Oh, yeah. Whole. Yeah. I have to try to make an automated sorted sorting <laughs> system by myself. Mm. At least I'm going to give it a shot. Got to give it a shot. Uh, I called in Magoo for the. Uh, shulker loader system mm -hmm. because though I was able to get it to work in creative it's way too bulky and Magoo's fit perfect within my design so yeah yeah we'll see how it goes see how that goes but that that's next on the agenda yeah oh man you're gonna have fun with that those are like some of the hardest things to design oh I know dreading this so I don't have one <laughs> the funny thing is I was like oh I've got a perfect design for Jimbo it's small and compact and you can use shulker boxes if you don't want to use chests. And I was just like, oh, wait, he's got to build it himself. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not going to be fun. It might be. <laughs> we'll see. This is supposed to expand my redstone abilities. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about. Could make them worse. We'll see. Just wait till you get to my belief now where it's like, you know what? Expanding my horizon stinks. I'm going back to what's comfortable and I'm going to make what I do comfortably better than before. Yeah. I'm kind of lean that way. <laughs> See, I could, Magoo came over and built that shulker loader in mm -hmm. like no time. I looked at it. He goes, okay, tell me how this works. And my eyes went cross-eyed <laughs> for a minute because I did not know what I was looking at or how he was able to put this thing together. And uh, yeah, it can be frightening sometimes trying to do something like that that you've never done before. Yeah. But got to give it a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. You got this. It'd be fun content, at least. Yeah. All right. So back to the other thing that, quote unquote, I've done this week. And it goes back a little bit to something we talked about in the pre-show in getting sand and harvesting sand, whether it be a farm or just mining it in the desert and everything like that. And I had an idea for a new, quote unquote, crafting table. That seems kind of obvious, and I'm wondering why we don't have one yet. Right. Stick with me. You've heard this one in the stream. I did. Because uh, I did a live stream yesterday, and that's when it really hit me. It's like, why is this not in the game? But like, So you have smooth stone, and then you have cobble, and you have gravel, and you have smooth sandstone, and you have sandstone, and you have sand, and all those can kind of be crafted together and make your... Why can't I get a table that's a crusher that can turn smooth stone into cobble, and then turn cobble into gravel? Like, I mean... It seems like a natural progression, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine taking smooth sandstone to sandstone to sand. We could polish sandstone. We can smelt cobble to get the smooth variations and stuff like that. But there's no way to go back. In real life, it would be harder to put sand into sandstone than to make sandstone into sand. You can just yeah. grind it up, make sand. Sand's got to be a lot easier to make than sandstone. Yeah, give me a hammer. Watch me work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do it with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crushing station. That would be interesting. I wonder what it would be. Just, you think like a grinder of some, some sort, but we have a grindstone. Yeah. So it's definitely something to think about. Thinking about it, I went to the blast furnace. Because to me, a blast furnace is almost useless. Almost useless. The only thing I would want to use a blast furnace for were to be to turn sand into glass, and you can't do that anyways. Nope. You can't do it. So, to me, 
I definitely agree with it should take some kind of fuel source to get these items back into the original state. So taking the blast furnace and maybe renaming it from blast furnace to something else, high pressure cooker or something weird like that. Uh, maybe blast furnace still works. And uh, maybe a little TNT animation goes off whenever you're trying to turn smooth stone into cobble or something. I don't know. Well, I've been watching a lot of like forging videos. Uh huh. And that's something I'm starting to get interested in. You know, people making knives and just other steel products. Um, I know that the heat solidifies it. So I don't know if a furnace would be a good idea to make it back into sand. Very true. Well, my first thought was you're talking about the forging stuff was that big hammer that you see, like they said, they stand on a pedal and it just pow, 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 pow. And they yep. run the steel through it or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The flatten it or shape it. Yeah. Yeah. My first thought was that, but that felt a little too out of the realm for Minecraft. So then I went, well, what's something useless that maybe I can give a new property to? And maybe it still is a blast furnace that has, like I said, maybe it's a quote unquote blast furnace where maybe instead of fuel like in rod or not in rods but uh blaze rods and stuff you got to feed it tnt <laughs> and then it'll explode the items mm, yeah you're kind of, well yeah you're cute kind of using sand to make sand though <laughs> that's true it's not a full-fledged thought out process <laughs> mm -hmm. um that's for the experts at mojang yeah i really like the idea mm. i don't see how it isn't in the game i always thought about that like I have all this sandstone. Maybe I can get sand out of it. No, it only goes one way. Once you get the sandstone, you can't go back. So, yeah, I've always thought about it being a, some kind of way to undo a craft. Let me drop my anvil on it, turn it into sand. There you go. Something. Another new item, a hammer. And then I'm going to have to complain about now I have to carry this hammer around with me. <laughs> yeah, to make sand. Got to make sand. Need my hammer. Yeah, where's my hammer? <laughs> All right, should we move on to the news? Yes. For me, there was no snapshot news, but you found news. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this was from last week's episode. Maybe it came out just after we recorded it. But uh, we have news that Minecraft Earth is ending in June, mm -hmm. later this year, middle of this year. Uh, I did notice that there's special perks going on at the moment, like reduced ruby prices. Uh, so you might want to take advantage of that if you haven't tried it already and uh there's a lot more details at the website minecraft.net about what's going on um mm -hmm. as far as i know they're going to stop i don't know updating it i don't even know yeah they might even be taken off the market completely like i i got a few details but the rest of it will be on there yeah so like if you already have the game you can continue to play the game there just won't be any updates for it but if you right. haven't gotten the game uh, as of June, you, it will no longer be on the marketplace, so you won't be able to buy it or download it or whatever it is. It said uh, June 30th. Yeah. That's when it's ending. So, yeah, if you haven't tried it already, go ahead and uh, check out Minecraft Earth before it's gone. I, I remember when they announced Minecraft Earth, and I was just like, this is not a game that's going to work. Yeah. And it's like, I hate to be a told you so, because I like the fact that the Minecraft gaming area, they're, like they're pushing boundaries and stuff. But that was just, I, I don't like the VR fad. Or it's not even VR, it's augmented reality. I don't like that. Yeah, it seems a lot more difficult to play. Yeah. And have fun while playing in that kind of experience. Now, I think, yeah. like, Pokemon nailed it. Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. Great way to interact with the environment and play Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, Minecraft was a little bit more difficult, I feel. There is a like a documentary with Mumbo and Green going around and playing Minecraft Earth, different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. But yeah, there's not much about it. You don't hear about it too much besides that. Well, let's not forget the absolute horrid timing of putting out a game that requires you to be on the move and going places to get new stuff in the middle of a pandemic when everyone's telling you to stay inside. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah, bad timing. Oh, well. <laughs> haven't got to play it to be honest yeah well i saw like the apple version and the android versions were different and the fact that the apple version could do more because of the uh software and hardware on the iphones mm, i didn't know that and i was just like well i don't have an iphone so if i can't take full advantage of stuff is, is it worth it it might have been but 
I, I don't like gaming on my phone. I'm an old man. Give me a computer. Give me a console. Yeah, especially on the phone. Tablet, maybe. Tablet, maybe. Tablet might work out better than a phone. Yeah, especially Minecraft. It's got to be difficult on the phone. Yeah. But I think that's it for the news, unless you got something else. Nope, that is all. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to last episode where we were talking about fish farms, and I kept saying they're totally broke. Turns out, like, they may not be. Firestar was mentioning that the old fish farms still technically work, but you won't get the treasure loot, which is what I was looking for. I just wanted the fish. I didn't care about the treasure. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I could still technically build one of these AFK fish farms as a food source. Pretty sure you could. Um, it might be something I try out, and if it doesn't work, oh well, I tear it down because they're simple enough. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they work for fish. Surprised I didn't mention that last episode. No. Yeah, I think a regular, just for fish, it should. I'm sure there's going to be a much better fish farm out there in general, just as a way to get fish. But to me, this goes back to the poor, poor execution of food in Minecraft. Definitely think that needs to be looked at. And it might look be looked at more with the combat update and how eating affects the Minecraft player. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely think there should be more foods in the game. Yeah, I'm kind of curious of a thought of someone that's, you know, plays the, you know, PvP aspect of the game mm -hmm. about food because they have to have the certain foods that they go after when playing PvP or yeah, what's the best ones to get, which ones mm -hmm. to throw away. You know, it'd be nice to get a thought from someone in that community. Yeah. About the food. I did think about, at one point I was like, well, let's try bread. I've never actually had bread as a food source. I always use bread to breed villagers, but never tried eating it. And then you look up at the stats for it, and it's like, you would rather eat cod raw than bread. <laughs> it's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Maybe not so much raw, maybe cooked, but still, still. Yeah, raw cod's bad. Yeah. Salmon is actually a decent uh, food source cooked. It's not a super high tier one, but it's not bad. So it's a great early game one. I don't know about me late game. I have the feeling I'm either going to go steak or cook pork chops. I'm going to try to hold off on the golden carrots this season, mainly because I don't want to build a gold farm. I've built a gold farm the last three seasons, and I'm just not wanting to do it again this season, even though this season it's a lot, er or a lot easier. And I have the materials to build one sitting in a shulker box. I just never built one. <laughs> yeah, I've been using someone else's. Yeah. Well, Carl supplied me with some cooked pork, ch pork chops that have lasted me a good bit, but I'm I'm under halfway <laughs> with that shulker box. So it's it's time for me to start thinking about real foods. Instead, I'm over here playing with honey. Yep, yeah, that's with the junk food. <laughs> the junk food. That's it. I'm, my, my food for this season is going to be like pumpkin pie. There you go. Cake. <laughs> How great would that be? See, cake, have cake everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, thanks for that update, Firestar. That comment was from our Discord, and our Discord is the only place where you guys can talk to everyone who works on the show pretty easily. Matter of fact, just take me Jason's word for it. Hey, friends, it's me, Jason, and I'm a member of the Withering Effect Discord. It's a great place to talk to your fellow listeners and give your input into the show. You might even get your question or comment read out on a future episode. Join the Discord today. Link is in the show notes, and I'll see you there. Duds 100% this message. Thanks for the Discord ad, me, Jason. And speaking of Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our new Mending Minecraft vote. Mending Minecraft is going to be a new segment taking over for a block of the week where we choose a part of Minecraft and try to fix it just like we did block of the week but this time instead of blocks or items it's going to be biomes mobs tree types stuff like that maybe not tree types but carl's probably like shooting me right now with stabby eyes like <laughs> duds shut up definitely bring up trees during the, the biome <laughs> that's for sure yeah or we could separate them it's up to you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't say that. Sorry. <laughs> now Carl's giving you some stabby eyes. Anyways, this week we asked you guys to choose between three mobs, and those three mobs were the horse, cartographer, and panda. Pretty random, but the winner of mending Minecraft vote this week is the 
Horse. Horse one. Before you go into your horse talk, mm-hmm. I would like Jimbo to read word for word his script he wrote for announcing a horse as the winner. Yeah, I, I didn't have a <laughs> script, so I had to write one out. So I wrote blah, 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 drum roll and all that, dot, 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 horse. <laughs> so I hope I hope we drop the drum it. roll. I, I kind of figured what to say, so yeah, I just think my <laughs> so script wasn't good. there. I should have read that word for word. Oh, I, I can't tell if it's because it's Sunday morning and I had lack of sleep last night or what, but I find it just absolutely hilarious. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't nothing there. Got worried. Had to put something. Hey, at least when you wrote your own thing, Carl didn't go and start changing the format where I couldn't read it anymore. Yeah, he was here too, didn't change it. <laughs> yeah, as uh-huh. I'm working on it, Got he's changing. <laughs> Anyways, okay, continue with your segment. Ah, uh, yes, the horse got 21 votes. Cartographer and Panda both with 15. See, I'd have leaned towards Panda. I would have picked Panda too. I like pandas. I know what it is. I don't know how I would improve a panda. They're adorable. Right. Yeah. They're just cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have some things on the horses. Uh, this is kind of hard to come up. You know, this is a block of the week. This is something different. Mm-hmm. But uh, the horses are a passive mob that can be ridden when tamed. They can be tamed by continuing to right-click to mount the horse until it sees hearts, till you see hearts, then can be equipped with saddle and armor. Uh, spawns in plains and savannas in herds of two to six. Uh, villages generate natural stables and animal pens containing horses also. It drops leather and XP when killed. Also a saddle and armor if equipped. Comes in seven colors. White chestnut, flaxen chestnut, Brown, black, gray, and dark brown with five different patterns such as plain, white stockings and blaze, white spots, white dots, and black dots. Yeah. And that's about it. There's a lot more to the horse, of course. Horse, of course. But, uh, yeah. We, uh, well, I was able to explain all that. All right. So now we get to the mending part. Uh, the horse, let's face it, is useless now. We talked about useless mobs earlier. It's obsolete. It's obsolete. The elytra beats the horse all the time, right? All the time. Every time. So let's start a little bit simpler. The horse texture. I think we all can remember, at least most of us could remember, when they changed the horse texture to this more blocky version, saying it fit better in Minecraft. Mm Mm-hmm. I remember. I'm going with, no, it didn't. Especially now, we're seeing more mobs come out with more detailed textures. But the horse got a downgrade, in my opinion. I don't like it. Yeah, it seems like everything's getting more, I don't know, mm-hmm. more of a texture. And the horse kind of went backwards, didn't it? Yeah. So I'd like to see a better horse model, more detail. Uh, it doesn't have to be as much detail as last time, but I felt the this new design is very lacking, especially when you got used to the way horses looked before. Mechanic-wise, there's not much improvement you can do to a horse. It's a horse. You got armor, you got saddle, you can ride it. Some of them jump higher than others, some of them run faster than the others, and some of them do both of those things better than others. I felt horse mechanics in general is great. Yeah, I like that. So how are we going to make a horse better than the Elytra? And the answer is, I don't think you can. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do. Yeah, I don't think a horse will ever be better the, than the Elytra. But I think a horse can be more fun than the Elytra with an item I'm calling the Pegasus Armor. And I'm going to take advantage of the Warden and these new loot caves where there's like little loot caches hidden away. Mm -hmm. And so when you're mining, you come into the deep dark, you're able to sneak past that Warden. You guys can't see it, but I'm juking and jiving with my head. He is. Yep. And, And you find this treasure chest, you open it up, and you got Pegasus Armor. Now, Pegasus armor, you can put on a horse, and that will, one, allow your horse to do brief glides. So you can be running, and you hit the jump button, and they'll do a little glide. And everyone's like, well, you can get a lighter with rockets. You can fly everywhere. It's better. It's like, yes, it is. But the Pegasus armor will also allow your horse to run on water, because technically it won't be running on water. It'd be kind of gliding while using its legs on the water to propel or pro- Push itself forward. Words. Hmm. 
So yes, it wouldn't be better than the Elytra, but I think with Pegasus armor, it would be more fun. I agree. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, especially if you're an explorer type person. If you don't have the greatest PC, Elytra flying is not great because chunks don't load fast enough and something like that. So staying close to the ground while still having the ability to do a little bit of flying might be a cool thing. So, yes, Pegasus armor. Yeah, the water seems like once you hit water, you know, your force is kind of useless. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that'd be a great way to get them around without, you know, leaving them behind in area, areas or putting them in boats. Take your horse wherever. You know, be like your companion, your little sidekick. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool to see someone just fly in a Pegasus for a meeting or something. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. Originally, I was thinking of stuff like saddlebags and things, but I mean, we already kind of have that with donkeys. You can put chests on donkeys, and that acts like a saddlebag. Yeah. Yeah, there's no inventory for the horse besides the, you know, the saddle and armor. Yeah, and then I went like, what killed the horse? Obviously, the elytra. So how can you make a horse beat an elytra? Well, you can't, but you can make a horse more fun than Elytra. And originally I thought, well, maybe just have the horse fly around like the Elytra. And it's like, it's still, why would you do that? I would just have an Elytra and fly around with rockets and stuff because now I don't have to worry about a horse running off when I get off of it. Yeah. Unless you did give it like an inventory, it might be worth bringing it around. Maybe. Your inventory is big, big enough as it is. Sometimes. Sometimes it isn't. Yeah. I was thinking, what if... You could uh, enchant the horse armor. You know, maybe you can give it a little bit of a speed boost, maybe uh -huh. a jump boost. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else it could do. Maybe it has like a horseshoe armor, like its own horseshoes that can make it faster or jump faster or jump higher instead of the armor. Maybe also give it frost walker. Yeah, give it frost walker. Mm, maybe a swimming ability. I could see that. I don't know. It would definitely change, take the horse to a whole nother level. Yeah. Even abilities that maybe we don't have or we don't think of. Like, maybe it could have that gliding ability. Uh, I, it's hard to see that without wings, though. Just the horse gliding. Yeah. Pegasus armor would make more sense there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just throwing that out there. If there's horse armor that you can enchant, what enchantments would be on it? Yeah. That's for the audience. Saddlebags are definitely one thing I'd love, even if it's just uh, six slots, so you'd have three on each side of the horse, mm. would be perfect for holding shulker boxes and stuff. Yeah. It was really hard for me not to straight up say, well, I want to make a new mob. It's like, no, 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 I'm here to make the horse better. What can I do to make the horse better without creating a new mob? And I think definitely you're hitting on it too. Armor is the way to go. Improve horse armor. Make something cool out of that. That's how you help the horse. Yep, give it some more attractions, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right, should we move on to our main topic? Yeah, that's all I got for the horse. All right. So this main topic came in my mind when I was listening to Carl's Best of 2020, which I want to put out there. Hey, Carl, why didn't Bet of the Year make highlights of 2020? Is it because I won? Is, it, is that what it's going to be? Exactly why. <laughs> No, but I was listening back, and we had King B-Dogs on the show, and we were talking about Minecraft Nights and how the Phantom is annoying and how sleeping's a little broken. So I thought, like, what if me and you, for this topic, sit down and try to fix nighttime in Minecraft? Make knife nighttime mm. enjoyable and uh, pleasant, shall we say. Yeah, enjoyable's a, f a stretch. <laughs> it, is a, it is a stretch. We did have a few days to think about all these, so yeah, it's not completely polished. Let's start with your issues you have with nighttime. Now, I'm going to put out there, you told me beforehand that all of my issues were issues you also had, so you chose some mm -hmm. different than mine just so we can spread the topic out. Yeah. So everyone keep that in mind when Jimbo's telling you his issues with nighttime. That There was more, but I'm already covering them, so we didn't feel like double talking. Right, yeah, you got some three really good issues. I put down a couple more. One is that it can hurt farm rates at night. Uh, depending on what farm you have, mob farms event, uh, especially, if things aren't lit up around your area, 
those mobs that are spawning in your farm will now spawn everywhere else. It's nighttime. Mm -hmm. There's not enough light. So rates can, uh, you know, take away uh, your farm efficiency. Yeah. It's one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have, I seem to have trouble with creepers. (laughs) Don't we all? Yeah. When you start off a new build, I always make sure I put enough torches around, which can be, that could be, pretty monotonous as it is just putting torches down for 20 minutes just to make sure everything's safe yeah uh but when you're when you're building real quick trying to get things up you, there always seems to be a creeper that finds its way over to where you are they even got to spawn near you they'll find their way over to you to blow something up and that always seems to be my issue my spawn town base got hit by a creeper shopping area I got hit by a creeper i blew it up I blew up to a creeper in my latest video while building a wall. Yeah, nice. it's just things get blown up at night. It seems like I can't be the only problem or only person with this issue. Creepers. Yeah. The other ones are pretty much on your side, the issues. So before we go over to my problems and my fixes, what about you? How would you fix nighttime in Minecraft? Uh, yeah, I have a few fixes here. One of them would be to make the nighttime more enjoyable with looks. I'm thinking more of a night sky animation. Maybe you want to see like shooting stars. I would love that. Maybe you want to see, yeah, maybe a comet or an asteroid or whatever, you know, come Mm -hmm. across the stream. Some rare events, rare occurrences maybe Mm -hmm. that happen at night that you might want to see. Maybe an Aurora Borealis, Northern Lights. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, maybe when the sun goes down or when it's coming up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just different sky animations, even in the day. Can't see much in the day, but you have the clouds up there that kind of distort the image in the day. Maybe at nighttime, they f- they fade away and you get some nighttime animation. Yeah. Before we go too far on there, I like what you said. Clouds? You the, Minecraft needs to raise clouds. Yes. They're so low. If you build anything tall, they cut through the middle of your build. And it's like, I always feel clouds should be just above build limit. I agree. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to, to build inside the clouds. Not that low, at least. I would turn clouds back on if they're above build limit. But as of now, they're staying off. Yep, they're off on mine. I'm also thinking maybe in some biomes, crops grow faster at night. That could be cool. It could could depend on the crop, but I'm thinking... A couple mm-hmm. biomes might be, I don't know, uh, something maybe lush, lush caves. <laughs> what what's the the spruce wood? Mm-hmm. What's that biome? Taiga, the taiga, yeah, taiga biome. Maybe the taiga biome. Things grow faster at night, you know, because of the the soil or the mega taiga. It's got that odd soil. Yeah, maybe vines or even mushrooms can grow a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah, not just so much crops. Maybe all plant life grows faster mm-hmm. in certain biomes at night. So maybe you want to keep your keep night up to get your efficiency of your farms or yeah, whatever you need to grow. That could be cool. I like that idea. And last thought I was thinking might make t- nighttime a little more fun is double XP at night when you kill a mob. Uh huh. Any mob that would spawn at night naturally you get double XP from. Now, there could be, you know, an instance where people make farms that only run at night Mm -hmm. to get the double XP. I think that's kind of even because you can go to the Enderman farm and get a ton of XP, but, you know, early game, get double XP at night. Yeah. It would keep you up at night, you know, so you wouldn't have to sleep through. Go through, even if you have a farm that works at night, you can go to that at night, but you're not sleeping through it. Exactly. No, I completely agree, with especially early game, because early game XP is such a grind. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you get bonuses for staying up and willing to fight hordes of mobs at night, getting double XP seems worth it. Yep. I love that idea. That's my first thought. I thought that was my best thought. Very good. Double XP. Well, you guys in the Discord and stuff, let us know how you liked Jimbo's fixes for nighttime. You good with double XP? You good with night animations? Crap's growing faster? I love all your ideas. Those are great ideas. Thank you. It's a first. (laughs) Did you just do (laughs) first? (laughs) That's a first. 
No, no, I generally like most of your ideas. Yeah, it was. It's always hard with uh, you know, a couple, a few days ahead of time thinking of stuff. But I do, you know, throughout the day. How can I make it better? You know, mm-hmm. put my thought out there. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't help. I waited till midnight the night before to go ahead and just write everything down because I'm like you. I'm thinking about it in my head all the time, but it's usually jotted down on a piece of notepad. And it's like, oh, I should probably put that in the file so everyone can see it. Yeah. Anyways, we're we moving on to my issues with nighttime. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it. I covered everything. You sure? Hundred percent. Nope. Good. <laughs> okay. So my issues I have with nighttime. Number one, phantoms. I love the phantom as a mob. I hate the phantom as a mechanic. The forcing players to sleep has me sleeping more than I ever have, which means I skip night more than I ever have, which means I stay inside more than I ever have. Sleep more than you ever have. My second issue I have is the massive amount of mobs that come out at nighttime. Like you said, disrupting farm raids. Uh, You're constantly having to light everything up, which causes a ton of torch spam. Which is just ugly, especially if you're trying to build a nice looking build in survival. Mm -hmm. It's just a mess. Really, if you want to play with light in Minecraft and you don't want to be on a mushroom biome, it reduces your block palette insanely to only blocks that have half slabs and stairs because those are not spawnable. And I think that's something Mojang needs to think about when we say we want more half slabs and stairs. It's because we want to play with lighting effects that we can't because of mob spawning. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the we're not trying to be creative. It's we're limited in creativity because of outside effects affecting palettes. So there's that. And finally, as a content creator, nighttime is just bad for recording. Mm Mm-hmm. I have internal shaders on, which brightens everything up as it is. But even when I walk into a dimly lit area with these internal shaders on and you watch it on YouTube, it's so dark. Like if I walk into my storage room and look up at the ceiling, it it, it is a giant black blob. You can't tell that I've done layers of glass and black concrete Mm -hmm. and everything. You just see black blob. Yeah. So it's like, well, that was kind of the effect I was going for, but not so much that poorly. (laughs) Yeah, I've noticed that. It's really hard to get the look on on YouTube. Yeah. It makes it so much darker. Even like underwater. Yes, very much. It's hard to record. Yeah, so those are my issues with nighttime in Minecraft. Let's get into fixing nighttime. Those were also my issues, by the way, also. Yes. Those are all my issues also. Jibbo was just trying to add on to the ones I already had problems with yeah. he has these issues also so if you have a fix that i'm not talking about definitely hop in and dog pile let's get these issues knocked out first problem phantoms uh, how do i fix phantoms seems like a great idea for minding minecraft carl if you're listening i'm giving you the answer now so you might not want to put phantoms in minding or mending minecraft <laughs> maybe make them more biome specific or a structure specific mob Kind of like the pillagers have the outpost. Maybe one of these new cave types house a phantom. Mm. My big thing is I want the bat out of Minecraft. I think bats are stupid. They don't bring anything to the game. They're super annoying. I would much rather have the phantom take the the bat spot in caves because the phantom is a cool looking mob. I dig it. Mm. And also, I'm going to bring this up. Dirty Blonde from our Discord put a texture where he changed the elytra wings to phantom style wings does that not make way more sense than elytra wings now yeah they look pretty cool yeah the the texture makes a lot of sense and i wouldn't mind seeing it switched over anyways fixing phantoms give them a give them a location that you can search out it would also make them a more farmable mob you wouldn't have to wait three days to get them to spawn and have a 10 minute window to farm them You'd be able to go to a location at any point, especially if it's in a cave and they still need light levels to spawn. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, I could see that. Do you have any other ideas for phantoms? Not really. Biome specific, I do like that. My only worry with doing a biome specific instead of a structure specific spot is that it could be a turnoff for people building in that 
biome just because of how hated phantoms really are. Unless it's like the mushroom they're specific to. <laughs> that you'd get like the good with the bad. Yeah. You, you'd get no mob spawning, but at nighttime you'd get phantoms every night. That may be a turnoff too. <laughs> yeah. Phantoms are just such a hated mob, which is funny considering it won a popular vote to be in the game. Yeah, they're just annoying. They really are. That makes you sleep through the night. Yeah. Waste it away. Wasting nights. So my second issue, the ton of mobs that are spawning, which then causes torch spam, which then causes ugliness and builds. The way I would fix that is a new beacon effect. And I've mentioned this before. I think a beacon effect to repel mob spawning is a great idea. You could make it uh, maybe, you know how you most people just use an iron ingot to purchase said beacon effect at the time? Mm -hmm. um, maybe the mob repelling effect costs something different. Maybe it's a little bit more rare. Maybe you have to put a phantom membrane in there, and that means phantoms don't spawn there. Maybe maybe you have to use rotten flesh and keep zombies out, or maybe you have to use a netherite ingot to keep everything out. Mm. And for me, I think this helps uh, you in a bit in the Hertz farm rates, because strategically placing a beacon that could repel mobs would effectively stop mobs from spawning in areas you do not want them to spawn, thus making your farm efficiency better because that would be the only area mobs could spawn. Yeah. And people wondering, the well, the beacon effect goes all the way up and down. And it's like, no, it doesn't go all the way down. It only goes so far down. So you really could control mm -hmm. where mobs would spawn with this effect. And a beacon such a late game item. The fact that you have to get the massive amount of iron or emeralds or diamonds or even netherite to create the beacon, you have to defeat a wither to get the nether star. It's such a late game item. I don't know why uh, repelling mobs would be a feared thing, making it too easy. It's like, well, the amount of work you got to do to get a beacon, I'm 100% I'm for this, especially after reading uh, Tango's post Tango Tech, he posted that with the new, uh, what is it, tinted glass, doesn't allow light through, you should be able to put a tinted glass on a beacon, and that would stop the beacon beam from going all the way up. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I'm still for, you have to have a sky path for a beacon to work. Like That's still fine, because you can still glass that over. But to not have that laser beam going all the way up to the sky, I, I think that's really cool. Yeah makes perfect sense yeah so adding that onto the fact that you could repel mob spawning that'd be awesome yeah and you can always adjust the beacon somehow instead of maybe 50 blocks radius it can be a little shorter yeah because it is you know kind of an op ability for the beacon mm -hmm. uh, repelling spawns or maybe you can use different blocks not so much iron maybe netherite has got to be the top layer to repel mobs, something along those lines. You know, it doesn't have to be just a, a beacon with all its original abilities, but maybe the beacon be, can be changed for this kind of mm -hmm. action, this ability. And normally I would argue that the beacon is already such an expensive item, as in the full tower and stuff, but I think people would love repelling mobs so much that everyone would agree with you, including me, that even if I had to put nine stupid netherite ingots on a beacon to get it to repel well maybe not that that might be a little too expensive but maybe add a full nether layer so instead of a nine by nine seven by seven five by five three by three mm -hmm. you had to add another one uh, what would that be it'd be 11 by 11 11 by 11 yeah maybe you have to add another one of those layers to get the effect in there mm, okay i think it's such a great effect that would get used a lot that people would be willing to put in the extra work to get it. Yeah, I agree with that. Always, always like that idea. Uh, and then my final fix, the bad recording issue. It's too dark at night and everything. I was thinking about what if you can get a night vision enchantment for a helmet so it would act like those minor helmets that have a flashlight on the front of it. Mm -hmm. So it's always uh, night vision at night. 
Like it does the daylight cycle. The day time doesn't change or anything like that. But the second it sees a light level go below eight or so, whatever mob spawning light level is, the night vision effect takes place. Granted, you could already do this with potions. So that would probably be the way Mojang would prefer you to do it because the mechanics already in the game some way. But yeah, I figured I'd throw that out there. Yeah, I don't know if uh, you kind of have to put a lantern on your helmet. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little weird. And it wasn't the greatest fix. Obviously, putting night vision on a beacon would probably be even better. But again, you're taking away from potions, which already has a night vision potion in there. So, yeah, they've got to grind for the potions first. Right. Yeah, night vision is always going to be an issue. Or nighttime recording is always going to be an issue, I feel like. It will be. Yeah, underwater. You kind of need night vision to do anything like that. I did a little caving expedition on my channel and there's some places where it's it's just black I'm like man you you don't notice it until you upload it and when, once it's uploaded it's too late you know it's uploaded <laughs> so it's kind of yeah uh, yeah i guess there's a way to change uh the hertz what is it i can't remember wintergrave told me there's a way to change a setting to make it to where it's a lot easier to see on your youtube channel at night mm -hmm. i have to get that from him well, I mean, you're talking about needing night vision to go underwater and everything. Let's not forget, the conduit already gives you night vision. Yeah, conduit does. Yeah, Mojang is not afraid to put a potion effect on a beacon or another item. Mm -hmm. There is that. Yeah, there's some hope. Mm -hmm. Got some hope there. Yeah, but any other fixes for nighttime? Uh, I can't really think of any. I know they just implemented to where you can actually, you don't need a, uh, what is it? An extra attachment to where you don't have to, a data pack to where you don't have to have one person sleep, mm -hmm. or where you can have one person sleep. They've added a game rule that allows that. Yeah. And I really think with these fixes, I would love to see a server set the game rule to 0%, so you have to be out at night all the time. Mm -hmm. There's no more sleeping on this server, so beds would literally only be spawn spots. Or if everyone were to sleep at the same time. Or or that. That gets hard. That gets hard. Someone's AFK. Exactly. Well, that's our nighttime fixes. You guys let us know how you would fix nighttime. We really like hearing from you guys. Yeah. If there's anything good, we always bring it up on the show. Yeah. Usually do. But I think that's going to do it for today's show. Before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our milk level patrons are Omni, Chief Big Bear, Croc, Fragile Rock, Stone Figure, The Official CCL, Vipress Tuna, and Whitey Whitey. If you too would like to get access to the exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, follow us, or if you listen to Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really reach the show helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com, tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links are in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be, and the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found down in the show notes. And like always, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for getting withered with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.